It's time now for the news review of this bulletin. The U.S. has threatened to once again veto a U.N. Security Council resolution demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Algeria has proposed a text and requested a U.N. Security Council vote on Tuesday. The draft also rejects forced displacement of the Palestinians in Gaza. The U.S. ambassador to the U.N. says the country does not support action on the draft resolution, vowing that it will not be adopted. This, as Palestinian U.N. envoy Riyad Mansour recently said, there is massive support for the text elements among council members. In October and December, Washington vetoed the U.N. Security Council text calling for a ceasefire despite international pressure over Gaza's growing humanitarian crisis. Glenn Deason, professor of political science at the University of Southeastern Norway, joins us from Oslo. And we also have Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, who joins us from Sydney. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Uh, Glenn Deason, I'll start with you first, if I may. Uh, when you see the U.S. position uh, be announced this way, uh, what uh, impression do you have of the U.S. stance altogether? Because it's uh, obviously uh, veto after veto, it's becoming uh, very evident where the U.S. stands on the issue. Well, the United States supplies the uh, actual weapons which is being used and it's providing the political cover for Israel. So this is very much an American war as well. Uh, I think uh, it, it's quite obvious that it's uh, starting to run out of reasons why it's trying to, well, why, why it doesn't want to support any prevention of this genocide. Uh, but uh, it has many repercussions. One, obviously, in the wider region, uh, if not the whole world, it's alienating a lot of countries. But I think that uh, with this new uh, efforts or this new pledge to veto and ceasefire, uh, I think we see it, it will be more, even more damaging to the United States because the international court is very recently ruled now in the end of January that Israel must do all it can to prevent genocidal acts in Gaza. And uh, it, not only would Israel be in breach of this, uh, but now the United States, and to the extent the EU continues also to support this, uh, they may have, they're making themselves complicit in genocide. So it's, it's quite dramatic to still continue to uh, sabotage these efforts of bringing about a ceasefire. Anderson, so when you take a look at uh, the fact that the U.S. Um, has not been able to, for example, reach uh, any type of uh, uh, ceasefire or pause or whatever name you'd like to call it through the talks that happened in Cairo, why do you think it uh, opts for a veto still, uh, even though it says uh, that these talks are ultimately would have uh, amounted to a ceasefire or a pause? Yes, it's, uh, the, I mean, the latest pretext for opposing the, the ceasefire proposal of Algeria is that the U.S. claims that it's involved in uh, talks with Qatar, Egypt, and Netanyahu, and uh, there's some sort of deal where they're trying to put more pressure on Hamas to uh, cave into their demands. So, in other words, they say they've got a secret deal going on, trust us. And at the same time, as, as uh, Professor Deason said, they're providing arms. There's a new round of arms going to Netanyahu. Uh, but the Biden administration is also crying crocodile tears over Rafah because they accept the logic that there's, a, there's terrible things happening in Rafah now. There is, um, uh, there's a huge trapped population which is exposed to the genocide that the International Court of Justice warned against, not just Israel, but any other states that are supporting or abetting this crime. So there, we hearing, we're hearing mixed signals coming from the US and the, the main pretext for trying to wiggle out of this, uh, which as you said, the Palestinian ambassador says there's huge support for otherwise, probably including amongst the Europeans, um, is that the US claims it's got some secret deal going on with Qatar and some of the others and uh, the UN uh, Security Council might jeopardize somehow that plan. But really it's another pretext in a very long line of pretexts. Um, and Glenn Deason, uh, do you think that, um, as you mentioned, given the fact that he had the ICJ uh, make its case and for the U.S. now to come out at this point in time um, to say that it's going to veto uh, the, it, mm, the type of image that that's going to portray to the world in terms of the U.S., because we know already, uh, obviously, how uh, that has been shattered uh, just in this one uh, particular case when it comes to the onslaught against uh, Gaza? 
Yeah, and it has to be said, of course, uh, all countries in the world to some extent uh, practice uh, uh, some hypocrisy, you know, selective use of uh, its principles. But for the United States, I think this can be even more devastating because uh, after uh, the Cold War, the U.S. pursued a security strategy based on the principle of global primacy. It would effectively have a global empire. And the legitimacy for this was to advance liberal uh, values uh, such as human rights. So this very explicit uh, d d d intention now to continue a, a genocide in Gaza even after uh, the court has uh, asked to stop all the genocidal acts. Uh, it, of course, it's not just makes the US complicit to genocide, but it unravels uh, a lot of the legitimacy for its entire uh, empire. And uh, I would just like to add uh, on one more thing. Of course, I very much agree that uh, this uh, talk with uh, Egypt and Qatar obviously is an excuse, uh, but it's, I think it's more than this as well. Uh, if we've seen through the decades, a country in the Middle East is targeted for destruction or invasion, whatever you want to call it, uh, we, we see that there's an effort to keep countries divided as well. So I think uh, uh, giving this impression that uh, or pushing for uh, splits in the region to have some uh, support uh, Israel's alternative uh, so-called uh, uh, it, it helps towards this end because uh, this is a very dangerous time for the United States as well. A lot of its allies uh, resisting it. Uh, keep in mind that uh, the Saudis didn't want to join in on the bombing of Yemen. Uh, the United States uh, put restrictions on the U.S. to strike uh, allies of, uh, or at least uh, allies or groups working together with Iran in uh, Syria or Iraq. So it's uh, uh, it's a very <coughs> difficult that's emerging. So they're looking for ways to redivide. I think. All right, I'm going to ask a quick question from you, Tim Anderson, quickly, if you can answer this. Um, doesn't this uh, prove to Hamas that uh, maybe it's not uh, at all a good deal to uh, um, reach an agreement of any kind when uh, you have the U.S. stance at this point uh, be in the form of a veto? I think the message that uh, people in Gaza are getting is that the, there's no one amongst the big powers, the states in the world, that are going to protect them. And the armed resistance, including Hamas, is really the only people that can protect them, including the Yemenis, including Hezbollah in Lebanon, including the other armed factions in Palestine. They are the people who have actually practically defended them and are taking on the responsibility to try and prevent and punish this crime of genocide. The other states in the world are effectively abandoning the Palestinians to their own causes and then we'll try and we'll try and criticize and attack the resistance for attacking the Israelis when in fact this is the only last line of defense that they have is the armed resistance. Thank you for that. Uh, let me thank Glenn Deason, Professor of Political Science at the University of Southeastern Norway and Tim Anderson there, Director of the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies. Thank you to you both. And with that we come to an end for this news review.